Hi everyone, I'm Dick Beardsley. Welcome to The Fishing Scene. I have a very special guest with me this time on The Fishing Scene, my good buddy Tony Buckta from Denver, Colorado. And today, folks, what we're doing, we're bass fishing here in the middle of the summertime. And what we're doing today, we're using what's kind of called a, a Carolina rig, but kind of a, a modified Carolina rig. Here's what, we're, here's what we're doing here today, folks. I've got a fairly small worm hook here. It's a number four size worm hook. And the reason it's got this funny bend in it like this is that when you put it into the plastic, it helps that hook stay up into the plastic. Then about a foot to a foot and a half above the eye of the hook, I've got a small split shot. That's it, all right? And what we're doing here, that split shot is just enough weight so that when we cast it out, it sinks very, very slowly. And then, as it sinks, we're using these plastic lizards and plastic worms. That little split shot will be on the bottom, and that plastic will be up like this, and it just flutters in that water down there. And what we're doing, we're fishing right along some, some out for some, from some pencil reeds, but then there's, out from those pencil reeds is a very thick mat of very, very thick weeds. And what we're doing is we're casting these plastic baits right up alongside, or actually up about a foot up into that real matted material there, and then we slowly pull it off there. Then, what you want to do is let it slowly sink, and that's the key. If, you're, if you think you're working your bait slow enough, slow down even more. That's the key to keep it on the bottom or towards the bottom. That's why you use this very, very small split shot. It's not going to get hooked up in weeds. And you, and, but to keep it close to the bottom, you got to work it really, really slow. Now there's a couple of things that we're using today. Uh, with Tony, what he's got on his, he's got a seven inch lizard. And you can see it is, it's, it's plastic, it's a power bait, and it's got four little legs and it's got a real wavy tail. So when that is on your hook and it's going down like this, that tail is just fluttering in the water. So we got Tony with the lizard, what I got on here is a seven inch black plastic worm. Now let me show you how you rig these up here. Again, you can see the tail pulsates when it's in the water. It's really tantalizing to those bass. They actually really absolutely love them. So now here's the way you want to hook these particular types of baits. You put it, start threading that hook down through the plastic. You want to go down about three quarters of an inch to an inch and then bring the point of that hook out. Okay, then, like that, then you pull that hook down to the eye and keep pulling it until that eye of that hook is gonna come out the hole you made right here. Just before that happens, you turn the hook back like this, okay? Then you, you pull that crawler, that plastic worm or that lizard down and bury that hook and what I like to do is I like to break through, just barely break through the plastic like that and then let it sink back down. So now there virtually, you've got a, a, a plastic worm that's nice and straight. Oops, it, sometimes those plastic, those uh, hooks will come popping out. And you got virtually a weedless type of product there. So now you can fish up right up in that junk and not worry about getting hung up too bad. So it's really simple. And then you just cast out and uh, see if we can get a few bass. I'll be back with all the action after this. What we're doing here now, folks, I've got my rig all set to go, and it's really matted in here. You'll, you'll see when you get on area lakes, if you're fishing close to pencil reeds, that the pencil reeds are in shallow water, but then out from those pencil reeds, there's usually some good mats of really thick vegetation, and I mean, it's really thick in there. You can literally walk across the top of it. Now, what we're doing here is we're just pitching these worms and these plastic lizards right along the edge of that, because right now, I'm in 12 foot of water, and less than a boat length away is that real matted vegetation. So I'm just gonna pitch it out there on the side, right, right off the edge of that vegetation, and then I'm gonna let it sink really, really slow. And just really just, you know, make sure it's down there, because like I said, I'm in about 12 foot of water. So with that small split shot and that plastic that's fairly buoyant, it's gonna take it a while to get down there. So now that it's there, 
and really that tail is, is going like this, it's vibrating. And then every once in a while you just want to kind of move it and jig it a little bit and let it sit back down. Now what happens sometimes also is you'll get the um, sunfish will peck on the tail and it's a lot different kind of a bite. The sunfish are going, uh, you know, like real peck. Fish, oh, fish on tone? Fish okay, hold on, let me get mine in. Oh, jeepers, I thought I had one there going too. Got a boy, Tone. All right, buddy. All right. You got a bass in Rooney here, buddy? Oh, yeah. All right, buddy. Yep. Let's, I don't, oh, there he is. I can kind of see him in the water a little bit. Oh, yeah. Nice fish, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's fighting really good. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right. Oh, there we go. Nice largemouth bass. All right. Boy, he sucked in that lizard, too, didn't he? Yes, he uh -huh. did like it. Look at that, folks. There we go. Nice largemouth bass on that lizard right here. Hey, look at that. Not a huge bass, but a nice bass. We'll get that girl back in the water here. Yeah, let's get her back in there. Come on, girl. There you go. All right. Good job, Tone. All right, buddy. Did it hit pretty hard? I mean, it's thumping? Yeah, it huh? nice. All right, buddy. All right, largemouth bass fishing. Hey, we're using plastic, folks. We're going to get back and get some more going right now. All right, Tom, we'll have to re rig that one there. You got it rigged? Yep. Okay, let me just get us back in a little closer here. All right, I'm casting that out alongside the edge there, these thick weeds. And folks, you know, a lot of people think, okay, bass fishing, great, but now I'm going to need a whole other arsenal of equipment. I'm not going to be able to use my rod and, and reel that I use for walleye fishing. Not true. What I'm using today, folks, is the same stuff that I use if I'm out jig fishing for walleyes. Now, granted, it's not real heavy-duty stuff, but it's going to work for what, you know, if you do a limited amount of bass fishing. If you're really into bass fishing, then you, you know, you're, you're going to might want to get some of the more high-quality uh, bass rods and reels. But basically what I'm using today, i got a 7.5-foot leech stick is what it's called. It's a graphite uh, stick with a light, real fast action tip and, uh, and then some good backbone because those bass, boy, when you feel them thump that plastic, you wanna, what, what you want to do is drop your rod, tighten that line, and really give it a good, hard hook set. So we're right here on the edge of the, of the weeds here now. And again, you just want to work that real, real slow. And if you feel that tat tat tat, that's most of the time that's just a sunfish or a perch pecking on it down there. But if all of a sudden you feel that thunk or it just stops, tighten up that line and give it a good hard hook set. I'm just going to let out a little bit more line here and move us just a little bit down the uh, edge of this matted weeds here. And again, if you get up in that matted stuff, you're going to be in, you know, even weedless type of lures that you use are going to end up getting some weeds on them, especially that little piece of uh, split shot on there. There's a fish. All right, boy, hey, not a bad bass, huh? He come right up, come right up out of the water there. Oh yeah, come on, buddy. Come on. Come on, buddy. Take my drag up just a hair. Oh, he loosed up a little. Yeah, he's a nice, good fighting bass. He's not all that big. Not a bad bass, though. Let me see, see if I can lip him here. You want to be careful here, folks. So, if he, because if he throws that hook, you might get it in your hand. But, but unlike walleyes, you don't want to do this with a walleye or northern pike. But hey, look at that. You can lip him just like that, huh? Nice bass. Boy, he hit that black plastic worm, huh? Nice fish. Good hook set too. I got it right there. I mean, he wasn't going anywhere. In fact, I'm gonna get my pliers out of there. And uh, he, uh, he just, you know, stopped the jig, or stopped, I should say, the plastic worm. And um, look at that, huh? Nice, nice bass. Not a big bass, about a pound and a half, but boy, just a nice, nice fish. We'll get her back in the water here. Hey, Dick, that was great fish. Hey, thanks, Toad, yeah. Hey, uh, you know, I know being from Denver, um, I know you don't have a lot of opportunities to, to bass fish out there, and, but uh, I know this bass fishing is kind of new to you, but it's kind of fun for you, isn't it? Very fun. I like uh -huh. it. It's a change. And it is a change from you know, your typical walleye fishing, and that's the neat thing. We are so blessed 
around uh, this, you know, northern Minnesota area is, you know, everybody talks about the walleye fishing, and we got some fantastic walleye fishing around here, but we forget about the great bass fishing we have here in northern Minnesota. You know, guys come up here from Missouri, from Iowa, from places down south where they've got really noted for good bass fishing, and they come up here and they are just overwhelmed at the phenomenal bass fishing we have here in northern Minnesota and the lack of fishermen that are out there actually fishing for them. You know, we've got walleye on the brain, but I'll tell you, and there's nobody that likes to fish for walleyes more than I do, but uh, it's a nice change of pace. When these bass are going and towing, hey, when they suck in that worm, is that, boy, when you set that hook set too, it's just a uh, solid, isn't it? Solid. I mean, it's solid. These bass are strong fish, and, and uh, you know, we're, the, some of the fish we've been catching are in the about pound and a half range, but you know, you hook onto a four or five pounder, and there are plenty of those around our area lakes. The key here, people though, in northern Minnesota especially, you really have to practice uh, mainly almost all catch and release on these bass because these bass, they're slow growing fish. We've got cold winters, short summers, so they grow a lot slower than they do even like down in southern Minnesota. And bass aren't that good to eat. The size, you know, this last one I caught and the first one Tony caught, you know, if you're going to eat any, Oh, had a little uh, sunny holding on there. If you're going to eat any, those would be the size to eat. But, you know, really, if you want to eat some fish, get some sunnies or something like that. But these bass are just fun to catch. We have a phenomenal bass fishery here in northern Minnesota. And let's keep it that way and practice catch and release. We got lily pads out here off to our left. In fact, I had one that, now that felt like a bass. It, it may have been a, a sunfish, but he nipped the tip of my worm off. So what I'm going to do here is... Uh, is put another one on and uh, and get back out there. But we're we got lily pads out here, and you think, oh, oh. everybody talks about fishing bass in the lily pads, and that can be uh, pretty good, especially early in the morning or late in the day. But for right now, we're in the middle of the day. We've had uh, water temperatures 81 degrees surface temperature, so those bass are sitting out in the outside edge. And last night we had some wicked thunderstorms that come through, and uh, bass are affected very. Uh, easily by you know adverse weather conditions what almost more than walleyes are in fact they pretty much are affected by it more than walleye so i'm really tickled today that we're able to get on some bass here tone that that uh, normally would maybe be shut down because of the you know the wild weather we had here last night uh -huh. but um, so anyhow we're we're working off the edge of those thick weeds and then there's some some scattered patches of a little cabbage that's out and about and just uh, that's where I had that last hit was right out in some of those. We'll be back after this with more fishing. Hey folks, we are back on the fish right now. We're fishing off the edge of this uh, lily pads, a thick vegetation, right off the deeper water there, no doubt about it. There's a fish, right on. All right, baby. Hey, Tone. How's it feel? Feels today? pretty good, buddy. All right. Feels pretty good. You sure got oh. a hot hand today. Yeah, well, thanks, buddy. I'll tell you what, though, not too bad for you. You've got one in the boat, and, you know, being a guy from Denver, Colorado, you know, I, that's a good excuse why you're not catching too many. I'm just teasing, you know. Hey, there, there's a, there we, there's a little jumper -oony. There's that black worm coming up the line there. Oh, man, black flies are biting me. The fish are biting the worm, and couldn't be living any better, could you? All right, let me get him in over here. And again, like I said earlier, folks, be careful when you lift these. There we go. All right, hey, not a, not a, about a pound and a quarter bass. Not a very big one, but uh, boy, he walloped that worm. And again, folks, here's the deal is you'll feel that worm just stop. I mean, it'll, it'll come to a complete stop. Sometimes you feel that thunk, but a lot of times it'll just stop. You want to tighten your line up and then boom, really, really set that hook home because remember, you're going through that plastic worm and then also into that fish's mouth. So you really gotta slam it home. Don't worry about setting the hook too hard. Let this, let's get this girl back in the water and get rebaited back up. Dick, steal here. You're hogging all the fish well, over there. Hey, Tony, you know, a guy gets lucky every once in a while. And this bass fishing, I know it's kind of new to you and you don't do a lot of bass fishing out in the Denver area, but let's talk a little bit about that, Tony, because I know, you know, I'm a fish fanatic, and I know you are too, but you, uh, being out in Denver, aren't as fortunate as we are where we got lakes right out of our backyard. 
and uh, you have to travel, and, and you travel and, and fish a lot of the reservoirs out in the western part of the U.S. I know one of your favorites, we talked off camera, was Lake, is it McConaughey? Lake McConaughey. And now that's in what, western Nebraska? Oklahoma, Nebraska. Okay, tell us a little bit about that lake and how you go about catching walleyes in a big body of water like that. Uh, we're pulling crankbaits, we're jig, jigger minnow, Okay. normally do. Yeah. Um, basically, we were there a couple weeks ago and it was just a crankbait and a uh, bite. It was. It was. Yeah. Now you were telling me, and I know you're real big on selective harvesting and catch and release and everything, but you were telling me at the fish cleaning house where you guys went in and checked out some things, you there were like two 50-gallon drums, drums filled full. Full of, of walleye fish guts. walleye guts. You're kidding. Unbelievable. Yes, I couldn't believe it myself when I saw uh, two or three 10-pounders uh, at least, and it just, you know... That fish. people kept in clean. Yes. Didn't throw them clean, back. That were cleaning. Them. Oh, that had to make you sick. It did. It did. And I thought about fishing with you and, you know, how selective harvesting. Yep. And uh, it just made me really sick. And I wish people would just stop and think. That yeah. Producers, well, that's the thing. And they're not good to eat. Now, besides the walleye fishing, you were telling there's something out there called a wiper. A wiper. What is a wiper? It's a cross between a white bass and a uh, striped bass. Oh, I bet they must fight, huh? Oh, my gosh. I mean, you can get them. Uh, like three pounds and just it, yeah it just break your wrist and, and I saw numerous uh, 12 10 or 12 pounders really that we now will you catch those on pulling cranks too pulling cranks uh, pulling windy rigs uh, you, you know the same stuff that you yeah you know you're catching the walleyes with now Tone I know some of those walleyes you caught you were uh, out in like 40 feet of water but they were actually suspended what like eight ten feet down suspended eight ten feet down and the day before we had a real bad nasty storm okay we only caught one fish that whole day pulling cranks doing yeah rigs, okay what, what have you yeah and uh wow they were suspended 40 foot of water no kid now what's the name of that crankbait you like to use out there because i don't know if we have them around here it was a purple and white uh wiggle wart wiggle wart because i don't think you can get those around here but i know boy you really like using those don't you that was fun and uh, it's slow uh, trolling is about it's pretty slow yeah two okay about two miles an hour yeah. And uh, you, do you have them in rod holders, or are you holding onto the rod, or? Oh, uh, rod holders. Okay. And you're letting up about 150 feet. No kidding. I'll be darned. Feet behind the boat. Sounds like fun. Oh, it was. I bet. Yeah, I bet it was. Good for you. Oh, got one. Got, got one on, Tone? Yep. All right, buddy. Oh, yes. All right, Tone. Oh, yeah. Let me get mine in here. Okay, Dick. All right, buddy. Good job. How's he feel? Bass? Feel like a bass? That's a, I think it's a bass. All right, let me get the net here. I haven't seen him yet, huh? Is he? Oh yeah, there he is. There I see him coming up. Oh yeah. Come on, Bassy. There he is. Hey, there he's doing a little jumping, huh? Okay. All right, right yeah. there at the end, about jumped into the net. I grabbed him out. Of, boy, he. I, I tell you, you know, I'm really surprised, folks, with the storm that we've had last night. Heavy rain had about three inches of rain. A lot of lightning and thunder. These bass are pretty darn aggressive today. They are. I mean, they're they're popping. These plastics, these lizards, these plastic worms we're using, I mean, they're really snapping it, which is kind of surprising after the weather we had. Yeah, about a pounder here, just not a nice little bass. We'll get him back into the water here. There you go, buddy. All right. Well, Tone, is that is that uh, lizard still good to use? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. All right. And I'll get uh, re-rigged back up here, and we'll see if we can't catch, a, catch another, uh, another bass here. Hey, Tone, not too bad of a day out, is it? Not at all. You know, yesterday you and I were out fishing and uh, doing some bluegill fishing with Grandpa Stan there and, and having a great time. And Actually, it was raining yesterday, but uh, it was a warm rain. Real warm. But then when that lightning uh, started going, we got off the lake, and, and then again it lightning and rained hard all afternoon, all into the evening. Finally quit about 10 o'clock. Oh, man. You know what? Sometimes that darn worm will... will kind of run up the stalk of that uh, cabbage that's down there and boy oh it, yeah it kind of feels it's like when you're jig fishing for walleyes in next to the cabbage with a minnow and a jig and it you know you start crawling up that stalk and it feels like a this might be a fish oh I guess not boy it might have been a little little sunny holding on you know, and here's another key here, folks, that um, 
you got to remember if it, if it feels different if, it, if you think it might be a fish just like there if you think it might be a fish you know what go ahead and set the hook so you got to rebait it or uh, you know rethread your worm on there whatever it might be hey you, otherwise more people miss fish because they don't set the hook because they think it's a weed when many times it's going to be a fish on there no doubt about that so I I got that pitch back out there I'm pretty sure that was a fish holding on but it might have been just a little sunny or something that was just kind of many times they'll kind of peck at it but that was more of a steady pull on there now, now there I got a sunny just pulling on that tail it, huh? yeah yeah if you're not careful they'll actually chew the end of that plastic tail right off of there see these worms like this one here I got a power bait on and it's scented so I think that kind of entices them a little bit more to uh, to kind of hold on that a little bit. Yeah, I'm going. I'm pulling through some celery and some cabbage down here. Oh man! Gosh, I got a little bit of weed on here. There it came off. Boy. I was about ready to set the hook on that one. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think of this bass fishing tone with using plastics like this? Oh, I like it. This yeah. Is, this, is, this is a lot of fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun, and, and uh, it's, it's fun, too. Sometime we'll have to get out here and do a show early in the morning when we're, you know, uh, top water and throwing hula poppers or a floating mouse, things like that, in that early morning when it's real calm out and those bass are roaming those shallow water areas. Man! That it's like a firecracker going off on the water when they when they hit those surface lures. Yeah, they really smack it. There we go. Yeah, there he's coming up there. There he gave a little bit of a jump anyhow. All right. Yeah, look at that plastic worm hanging out of his. There he goes. All right. Let me grab him here. Come here, buddy. There we go. All right. Hey, folks. Largemouth bass fishing, using plastics. Thanks for the fun day, buddy. And uh, just having a ball out here. And uh, you can have a lot of fun bass fishing, too. And please remember to practice selective harvesting. But by doing so, we'll continue to have great fishing for years to come. I'm Dick Beardsley, along with my good buddy, Tony Buckta. Thanks for joining me today on the fishing scene. I'll see you out on the water.